Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we'll be completing the final book in the Hishi saga written by Frederick Paul, The Annals of the Hishi, published in 1987. Before we begin, do me a favor and subscribe, give us a like, drop us a comment, and now The Annals of the Hishi. Rabinette Broadhead and his wife Essie are at Wrinkle Rock. Wrinkle Rock is the asteroid that was once known as the Gateway Asteroid but is no longer used for that purpose since the Hishi came out of their black hole. Rabinette, who is dead, has had his entire personality converted to a machine intelligence. Essie, his wife, has created a doppelganger of herself as a machine intelligence to keep him company. They are there on Wrinkle Rock for a party celebrating the centennial of finding the Gateway Asteroid. Wrinkle Rock has been moved into Earth's orbit and it is now used as a sort of old people's home. And when they die, they are converted to machine stored intelligence. Also on the asteroid is General Julio Casata, who is a member of the Joint Assassin Watch Service, JAWS and he has given an order for no one to leave the asteroid. So Robin decides to tell how he got to this point where he's on Wrinkle Rock trying to enjoy himself and this general is annoying him and it begins at a place called the Watch Wheel and the Watch Wheel is a space station. It was specifically designed to put dream seats and the dream seats are there so that specific human or hichi can monitor the kuchel blitz. A kuchel blitz is a type of black hole that was formed from radiation instead of matter. And that is where the creatures that the hichi call the assassins and humans call the foe are operating from. And both of them, the kuchel blitz and the station, sit in intergalactic space just outside the Milky Way galaxy. On the station there were two friends, soon to be joined by a third. It was 9-year-old Harold and 8-year-old Sternutator, known as Sneezy. And they were joined by a new student who came on the station with her parents, 8-year-old Oniko. Harold and Oniko were humans while Sneezy was Hichi. They were kids having fun until one day an unscheduled Jaws ship came and ordered that all the kids be evacuated. So our three friends were evacuated to Earth. Albert steps in at this point to tell a few things about the foe, like they've killed at least four civilizations and damaged a couple of others. And they're causing the universe to slow down and collapse. And the fact that the Hishi who came out of the black hole helped humans build a watch wheel and stand sentry duty at the Kujal Blitz. The Hishi's goal was to search for intelligent life. The first two intelligent technological life they found were dead, seemingly from some sort of external force. Back in Winkle Rock, Robin heard about three Hishi that came to the rock and one of them was Glare who worked with the famous Hishi Tangent. So he went to meet them so he can have a tangent first hand. And the three Hishi were ancient ancestors, meaning that they were dead and had been transferred to machine intelligences. Glare was Tangent's pilot, so she began telling the story of Tangent's most famous exploration. When the Hishi went exploring, they went looking for intelligent life. Tangent's ship was specially designed to go into a gas giant. This gas giant held life, intelligent life. It was called a sluggard planet. Finding life, especially intelligent life, was important to the Hishi. They had only found 80,000 worlds with any type of life in the entire galaxy. So when they found the sluggards, they were excited because the sluggards were intelligent. They had machines, they had governments, they had language, they had poetry. The first ship to the sluggards world found out that the sluggards moved and talked very slowly. Between the visit of the first ship and the second, 61 years had passed, but on the planet only 7 hours had passed. And the Hishi used those 61 years to try and build up a vocabulary of the sluggards. So when Tangent took her ship down into the atmosphere of the planet, she was trying to get close to the sluggards so she could communicate with them. But the sound the ship made when it stared down into the planet caused the sluggards pain and killed the weaker of them. Something the he she did not realize at the time. So they gave up that attempt. But meanwhile, back at the home world of the he she, 
the ancients were still trying to translate the recordings from the sluggards and they were able to and it told about a account of visits by creatures that seemed totally hostile to organic life creatures of energy that appeared and caused great destruction meanwhile landing on Rinkluak was Audi Walters III who was the first human to go with the Hishi back to the core where their black hole is Rabin wanted to know what happened when Audi went to the core but he figured asking him would take too long since he feels that living humans react too slowly so he went and he asked the ancient ancestor that the Hishi had given Audi. Audi was the one who helped to convince the Hishi that the humans were not going to come in and hide with them that with or without the Hishi they were going to try to do something about the four. A little while later they found out that Jaws has taken all the broadcasting circuits off the air. At this point Robin continues telling the story of the three kids that were evacuated to earth. Howard, Oniko, and Sneezy. They were put in a school on a small island near Tahiti. Now all this happened just before Robin and Essie went to Wrinkle Rock. Apparently Sneezy and Oniko spent most of their time studying subjects that the mechanical teachers thought were a bit advanced for 10 year olds. Plus they seemed to be having the same dream. And as they were talking to the teachers, a broadcast came over that a message was beamed in the direction of the Kujal Blitz and the announcer read off a small portion of the message, at which point Oniko excused herself and left, and Sneezy followed her and found her crying, and she said that was from her diary. Meanwhile, Essie and Robin goes to the general to find out why did the jaws cut all broadcasting. He replies he doesn't know, but he needs a ride to the jaws headquarters on their satellite in orbit around Earth, so they agree to take him and he sneaks a companion, a female intelligence, on there with him. He ends up getting caught and telling Robin about it. Meanwhile, Albert takes this opportunity to tell Robin about the birth of the universe, how it expanded, and how it will eventually cool down to the point where everything will go out and no life will be possible. When Robin asks him what kind of universe are they for trying to create when they cause the universe to rebound, and Albert doesn't know. They finally arrive at the Jaws station and they are kept waiting while the Jaws commanders are in meetings. Meanwhile, down on Earth, on the same island that our three friends are at, there is a prison with only one living prisoner. All the other prisoners have become machine intelligences and are serving their time that way. This prisoner was a former US general that was a terrorist mastermind who tried to kill Robin twice. At some point in time, they transfer another prisoner there who's another terrorist mastermind. At some point, the prison lost power and those two escaped. And below the prison is the school. And of course, they get down there and they kidnap our three friends. They're planning to use them to get off the island. Meanwhile, up on the station, we find out it was Jaws who turned off the power in that section of the island because they wanted to catch the foe who they think came to Earth riding in Sneezy and Onoki's pads. Meanwhile, Robin, using a double ganger and with Jaws's help, rescues the kids and kills the escaped prisoners in the process. He then gets the parts from the kids and manages to communicate somewhat with the foe. In the process, he dies again, which is traumatic for him. Shortly after this, the Jaws launched their massive fleet towards the Kujal Blitz. Naturally, Robin and crew follow them in his ship. Along the way, Albert tells Robin why the universe has nine dimensions. Along the way, he and God holds a conversation. They gather in time to see what looked like ships coming out of the Kujal Blitz and they surrounded the Jaws warships and the warships disappeared. The Jaws cruisers disappeared and so did the uh, watch wheel. Then it was Robin's ship, the True Love's turn, and it was taken back into FTL and dropped off at Earth's orbit. Back in orbit around Earth, they found out that the Jaws ships had a slight problem. None of their weaponry work. Everything else worked just fine. So Robin does what he always does. He called 
for Albert and asked him if we were in danger, if the foe is going to come and kill us all. And Albert responded, no, of course not. Not after they met you, me, Miss Broadhead, Miss Lowe, and General Casata. Then he told Robin that he was busy and must excuse himself. Robin and Essie had their data stores taken down to their house on the Tappan Sea, where Essie tried to figure out what was wrong with Albert, who was not responding to their calls. Everybody on Earth calmed down when nothing happened. The foe didn't come out and kill them, so everybody went back to their lives. Joss, of course, was planning to build a bigger and more powerful fleet, but Everybody thought that was a stupid idea, but since nobody else have a better idea, they went ahead to do it. Then Robin brought down Cassata and Alicia Lowe's data stores to be with them, and together they tried to figure out what Albert meant when he said that the reason the four didn't kill them was because of the five of them. They of course couldn't figure it out, and that's when Albert appeared to clarify things. The others is what Albert now calls the foe, and he said that they didn't realize that intelligence could evolve from matter. They just saw creatures made of matter as things that could destroy their plans, so they encouraged them to destroy each other. Then when they checked the watch wheel, they noticed the machine intelligences, so they decided to investigate. And the investigation led them to believe that one day, both humans and he, she will all become machine intelligences and from that evolve to become just like them. And this is going to happen by the time the expansion stops and the fallback begins. And that is basically how the book ends. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Give us a like, subscribe if you haven't, and drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.